Angerberg Buchholz um, and the district of Angerberg Buchholz and surroundings and also the because the, and also the team of <laughs> the, the this <laughs> foundation <laughs> center as it is called because you will not see the work which had been done in the past in order to prepare for such a convenient and highly technological and successful meanwhile conference as we have today. It's a wonderful thing to see. And in, in the same line, I'd like to thank the Media Center of the Mining Academy of Freiburg, the Technical University of Freiburg, because they actually handle the internet live stream of our conference and symposium. So we are not the only ones here in the room, because it is sent broadcast all over the world. A wonderful thing. You might have recognized, if you actually looked around, you may have recognized the wealth of literature. Have you ever seen a thing like this? Some of you may have, at least uh, as it's called the annals of meteorology. But that meanwhile, our climate days is allowed, permitted to be published in this series of the Meteorological Institutes. That is why I'd like to thank you. Dr. Gudrun Rosenhagen, the uh, president of the uh, Meteorological Society, which will hold a speech also in a couple of minutes. So, thank you. Yesterday, some of you have taken part in an afternoon event, 100 years of Fichtelberg, Fichtelberg Mountain. And there's another poster saying 100 years of Warnsdorf. These are two meteorological stations celebrating their 100th anniversaries. And year by year, we actually pay more and more attention and importance, attach more importance to these stations. They are properly maintained. They deliver reliable data. I've just been in Brazil and visited the meteorological service in Brazilia. This is a Brazil is a country where all of Europe could be put into. They have one tenth of the staff of what we have here in Germany for the German weather service, and you have a measuring network control system which is cruelly bad, poor, cruelly poor in comparison that we actually, that it is very bothersome to actually evaluate the data supplied by the system which also has an has an age of 100 years. It's a very tricky thing. And then I brutally I'm reminded of what wealth of data and systems we have in terms of a robust, properly maintained network of measuring stations. Because a lot of questions of the future will be answered by the data we deliver today. And in future, people might say, oh, we should have done better in the past. So this is the importance of the Annaberg Climate Days. This long-term approach is something which we need not only in climatology, but also in a lot of issues of the future. So let's come to the topic of climate change. This is a moving topic, and uh, I see that you're not indifferent, otherwise you would not have been here. But it's not just, it's not uh, primarily about the global climate change, because the global climate change is more statistical, statistical than reality. But what we can experience and see and feel is the regional climate, and the Erzgebirge, the Ore Mountains, is one of the regions of Europe, where we can feel it very intensely, not only for scientists, also for the broad public. There is a big misunderstanding in the general public, and it's very tr tricky to actually clear this up. The difference 
between weather on the one hand and climate on the other, and in any media, also in quality media, they, they actually uh, use the notion of climate change whenever they speak about weather and meteorological conditions. So they try to make a conclusion out of a specific event of a certain moment. It might be, but not necessarily. And all actually dealing with climatology know the difference. Our industry or our scientific branch is responsible for this when using the data in order to extract information showing without any possibility of misunderstanding what actually happens behind the scenery and what the future evaluation will be, then it is, it is wise to adapt ourselves because certain things cannot be solved by just waiting. But there we need proactive approaches, action, but in most cases we don't do it very voluntarily, but only when actually being urged and then it will be more expensive than when doing it early. And that is why climate extremes, extreme events take a large part of this symposium because there, are, there is a wealth of brand new experience and situations. But I think it's enough for me to uh, speaking. I thank you for your attention, for your visit, and I'd like to pass the word to our State Minister. Thank you.